Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the real analysis. Today we will discuss about all those questions from the part B and part C which was come in the December 2016. We will solve all those questions with the help of the shortcut tricks. Myself Dr. Harishkar. You can simply follow my YouTube channel Dr. Harishkar where you can find the various previous year videos. Else you can simply scan and join my WhatsApp group. What you will be found on my YouTube channel, there is a playlist CSR, UGC, NET, GATE and IIT JAM where you can see the real analysis questions previous year PYQ questions of the December 2018, December 2017 linear algebra questions as well as the PY questions on the partial differential equations from the year 11 to 23, PY question on the differential equation, integral equation, calculus of variation, eigen's value and many more are there. Also some statistic solutions are available. You can also follow and subscribe with the bell notification to join my so, YouTube channel. So let's start with this video. So remember student I already informed you in my previous videos in almost all the videos that whenever you are trying to solve this any of the competition exam your target is to provide one counter example so that you can discard the options. Always remember your focus is to read the statement more instead of solving the problem. So look at this first example. Consider the set of the sequence x and y then which of the following is countable, finite and uncountable. So nothing is to be solved in this problem. They are not talking about that what is the answer of this problem. They are just simply talking about the conceptual problem. Okay, so what is that? The first concept is a sequence. So we know what is the sequence the definition is n natural number to the real line. That is the definition of the real numbers of the sequence. Now look at the for the x case. What is that? Xn is a sequence such that Xn belongs to the 0, 1. So for the x, what kind of this here? This belongs to the, that is a binary, that is a 0 and 1. Fine. Then how you can check the countable and uncountable? What is the cardinality of this x? So cardinality of this is my 2. So 2 raised power, what is the cardinality of n? It's elf node. What is the cardinality of this set is my 2. So it is 2 raised to power elf node. So what is the 2 raised to power elf node? It's a c and you all know what is the c cardinality of c that means x is my uncountable set. Fine. So it means the first option cancel and third option cancel. Now same we can do for the y. What is that collection of all those sequences such that x of n is my 1. So what is that? What is the right hand side? It is only my singleton here because whatever the sequence you have defined, it is always be a 1. So what is the cardinality of the y? What is the cardinality of this is 1? Cardinality of this is alpha naught, which is a 1. What is the meaning of that? This is my countable. So it means x is uncountable, y is countable is the right answer of this problem. So you can see nothing is to be solved the problem, just read the statement and think about that countable and uncountable. Okay, look at the next example. So this is the function f is given to you as the two part say one is f1 and second is my f2 fine. So this is my x square is my f1 and this is my f2 then you have to find the derivative. So how you can find the derivative that's a very simple you can find the Jacobian. So what is the Jacobian partial derivative of f1 with respect to x partial derivative with respect to y same partial derivative of this with respect to x, partial derivative of this with respect to y because of the x and y. So what is the answer of this? What is the partial derivative of f1 with respect to x? y is 0 cos x, y square is 2y. So this is the right answer of this problem. Fine? That's a very simple, usual, simple task. Okay, next one is a function is given to you as xy then you have to find the directional derivative. So all of you know what is the directional derivative that is a gradient into the unit vector. So that so you have to find the gradient at the point say p. So what is given to you firstly you can find the gradi uh, directional gradient of this. So what is the gradient of this partial derivative with respect to x i cap partial derivative with respect to y j cap. So it is my y i cap and x j cap. So at which point you want to find directional derivative at the point A. So this is here. So directional derivative at the point A is my A2 i cap A1 j cap. 
what is a v v is my 1 comma 2 what is the unit vector of this v so 1 i cap 2 j cap over 1 plus 4 is 5 so what is the directional derivative this is a2 i cap a1 j cap into i plus 2j divided by root 5 so what is the answer a2 plus 2a1 divided by root 5 so look at that a2 plus 2a1 so root 5 is there so this is the answer this is the a1 this is not there a1 plus 2a2 but is divided by 2 but we need a root 5 so this is also the correct wrong answer right answer is my b is the correct answer okay so uh, this this kind of the question we already explained in many times in my previous video remember whenever there is a limit and whenever there is a summation you always try to write in the integrations so what is the integration rule is you always write in terms of 1 by n so uh, how i can write i can write this 1 by n is here what is the remaining is n cube so i can write this n cube as of here fine so i can transfer this into the integration how you can integrate i can take x is my j over n so this is my x cube what is my dx this is my 1 by n fine so this is my 1 by n of here now what is the limit when j is equal to 0 what is the value of x 0 when j is equal to 2 n minus 1 over n so as n approaches infinity this value will goes to the 2 because i can return as of this so limit is my 2 so what is the answer of this x4 over 2 from this so 16 x4 by 4 so 16 over 4 minus of 0 right answer is my 4 that is a a is the correct answer of this problem always remember whenever there is a limit and the summation sign convert into the 1 by n and the remaining portion are there convert into the integration form okay look at this another one f is the mapping from r to r such that f of 0 is my 0 and derivative at any point is less than equal to x okay so what is the tips is there whenever there is inequality is there try to think as equality part fine so what is my f f is my 5x fine so that means f of x is my 5x it also satisfy this condition or you can say if you integrate them plus c if you write as a c then f of 0 is 0 then its c will be a 0 so the function will be my 5x now what you want to calculate you need a f of 1 f of 1 is my 5 so look at that it's equality 5 so 5 does not belong it's a cancel out it's a 5 does not belong it's a cancel out 5 does not belong cancel out this is the right answer of this problem because it's a mode of them so what is the meaning of that mode of f1 is less than of equal to 5 so it means f of 1 will lies between minus 5 to plus 5 is the right answer so that's answer is b now this is 62 that's the part c options are there so it has more than one correct option what is given to you let s belongs to the 0 comma 1 okay then which of the following are true that's a very very simple you can take any of the value say s is my 1 by 3 for example fine so let's start with the first part for all m in the natural number so i can take any of the m say m is say 4 there exist n such that s is my greater than of the m by n what is the meaning of that s is my 3 1 by 3 m i can take as 4 can you find the any of the natural number whose well whose in this inequality will be hold clearly say that if i take this it must be this number must be greater than of the 12 so if i take 13 which is a natural number so 13 is greater than 12 that's holds so look at that there exist so they are not talking about for all n they are only talking there exist so there exist n that's a 13 which satisfied here so it means this is a correct answer look at this another one so again since it is for all m so you can take m is again as a 4 so is it possible 4 over can you think there exist can you think any of the n so that this inequality holds you can take n is my say 2 so clearly says that this is my hold so there exists so it's also satisfied 
now it is now it's equality so how you can take as equality so it's a ratio so look at that m and n are my uh, are my natural number so ratio will belong to the q so if i think about s is my irrational number say root 7 this also belongs to the 0 1 so can you find any of the two any of the two for all m so again i can take m is my 4 m is my 4 can you find the value of the n so that this becomes equality you can never find so this means this option is not true similarly sum of the two natural number will be a natural number but this s is not a natural number so it means this is not true again the same counter example will hold what will be added which is a natural number so that it becomes a 1 by root 7 this is not true so right answer is a and b always remember remember student whenever you are working on the real analysis provide a very simple counter example you can discard the options easily okay look at this one so what is given to you a function is given to you as minus 1 raised to power x whenever x belongs to the clause interval 0 1 then which of the following statements are true pointwise convergence subsequence pointwise convergence subsequence convergence pointwise everywhere pointwise subsequence so basically they are talking about the subsequence so firstly we will check about the pointwise convergence so firstly we will take n approaches infinity of fn so what is that here now x belongs to the 0 1 so if firstly i will take whenever x lies between 0 1 so what will happen whenever x lies between 0 1 so it will be 1 by something raised to power infinity is a 0 next is what will happen when x, x is 0 when x is 0 it becomes a 0 what will happen if x is 1 so it becomes a minus 1 raised to power n so what is the value of the minus 1 raised to power n it will be plus 1 when it is even minus 1 when it is odd so it has a two values 1 or minus 1 so all the values will not converge to the 0 it means it is not a piecewise continuous on close interval 0 1 although you can see it is a piecewise continuous on the close interval 1 and open interval so definitely this option is cancel out everywhere fine now they are talking about the subsequence what you can do now you can see if i define a subsequence same function here if i define the subsequence as 0 comma 1 fine so what is the meaning of that this is a this is a subsequence because equality is not be there and at this point this is my piecewise continuous a piecewise convergent as we see limit 0 and all are 0 so this means this is the piecewise continuous so there is no piecewise subsequence that's also the wrong statement how many points are there how many are there these are the uncountable so how many piecewise subsequence you can form they are infinitely many subsequence like say if i say x is 0 for example so what is the value of this this is a 0 if i take x is half again it is minus half raised to power n is again goes to the 0 so how many subsequences you can define infinitely but it said exactly one subsequence here it's cancel out so there exists a point wise convergence like 0 or many more are there so basically they are infinitely many point wise subsequences here so the right answer is my b is the correct answer okay so next one is which of the following function are true so what is that this what is the all of you this and this what is the meaning of that this is my infimum limit this is my supremum limit so what is the tips for you again there is because nothing is given to you so you can see if limit x approaches a f of x exists remember then limit x approaches a supremum limit x approaches a infimum and limit x approaches a f of x all are my equal fine now what we will do we will check the limit at the point r by 0 so we can check the limit at 0 so what is that sine of 0 is 0 what is the sine of 1 by x uh, that is a bounded function between minus 1 to plus 1 so the answer is 
zero which exist fine so once they are existing then upper limit and the lower limit both are same so the second option is cancel out first option is correct once both are same it must be equal to the limit at the point here that's a zero so the limit su supremum is zero limit infimum is also zero but it is one so it is a wrong answer so a and d are my correct answers next one is which of the following sequence converges uniformly so it's a sequence of the function remember always whenever there is a sequence of the function always apply the mn test or you can see if i this is a function so you can start with here if you prove this is a mn and prove that this is my convergent how you can prove that convergent you can apply either a root test you can apply either a ratio test you can apply either a p test or any of the testing r so look at the first one if i take this function as a mode so since is this is exponential negative so it is definitely be less than of the 1 over n cube and this is my convergent how by using the p test because we all know the series 1 by n raised to power p is convergent whenever p is greater than 1 and less than equal to 1 it's a divergent but here p is 3 which is a convergent so find out which of the following series convergent uniformly so this is the correct statement again for here if i take the modulus sin is always be less than of the 1 over n raised to power 5 so again this series i take this summation on the both side p is my greater than 1 so it is also convergent uniformly this is also be there x so what is that x minus pi is less than x is less than pi so what is that this is less than of pi raised to power n over n raised to power n so since p test is not applicable here so which test you can apply i can apply the root test if i simply take un is pi raised to power n over n raised to power n so then it will be pi by n it goes to the zero as you take n approaches infinity which is less than 1 so it means this is a uh, convergent uniformly by the root test so this is also the correct answers now look at this one uh clearly says that the limit does not exist what is the value at x approaches minus of pi if i take this is my f what is that it goes to the what is that uh, what is the limit when x approaches x minus so it is my infinity because it's zero and what is the limit x approaches pi of x it is zero because it's a 2 pi 1 by n as of here it is my finite so clearly say that limit limit does not exist so once the limit does not exist it means it is never the a uniform convergent even it is not a convergent sequence so it means the right answers are a b and c are my correct options of this problem moreover you may think this problem in another way manner b so like first and second options are correct fine you can find the radius of convergence of this also so what how you can find the radius of convergence i can write this as of this what is the radius of convergence 1 by limit if i say an raised to power n so this is what is that limit an is my 1 by this so 1 by n as n approaches infinity so it will goes to the 1 by infinity is a zero it's infinity so what is the meaning of that it converges uniformly on this complete r so since it is a part of this so it is also convergent if you think about here the radius of convergence is my 1 by an is my here if you take this it is my 1 so r is my 1 center is my pi so it means this is convergent over this domain or you can see x plus pi whole square is my greater than 1 so clearly say that it lies outside the minus pi to plus pi this is convergent condition but it lies it doesn't lies so x does not lies between the minus pi to plus pi so it means this option is cancel okay look at this one so which is the following is a uniform uh, we already explained the same question in the december 2017 and the december 2018 video which is available at my here so i already explain the same question same kind of the question and the shortcut tricks in this video what is the shortcut tricks for you f is uniformly continuous on the close interval a comma b when when you prove that limit a positive of the f and 
limit x approaches b minus of the x both exist whether they are equal or not there is no problem but both must be exist then you can say it is a uniform continuous so look at that what is the limit x approaches 0 plus of e x that is a finite what is the x limit x approaches 1 negative of e raised to power that is also the finite so it means this is a uniform continuous similarly if you look about the second option what is the limit x approaches 0 positive of the x that is a finite because answer is 0 limit x approaches 1 minus of the x is a 1 which is a finite so this is also correct look at the third option limit x approaches 0 positive 10 pi by 2 x answer will be infinity which is not exist so since limit does not exist it is not a uniform continuous look at this next one f of x limit x approaches 0 positive of the sin x that sin 0 is 0 so they are exist and limit x approaches 1 minus sin of the x is sin of 1 which lies between minus 1 to plus 1 this again exists so it means this is also the correct answer so a b and d are the right answer you just remember this shortcut takes for you in your coming examinations okay look at this one so what is given to you a function has the partial derivative this is x square a function has the partial derivative y square is given to you then the directional derivative 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 and the directional derivative that's a very simple remember look at the partial derivative if you look about the partial derivative x square both are my continuous so what is the tips for you if the partial derivative f fx and fy both are exist and continuous both are exist and they are continuous then it implies f is differentiable at all the points on the domain fine so look at this option fx is a continuous is a differentiable f is differentiable at all the points so f is derivative at all the points is a correct statement fine now what about the direction derivative so again second tips for you this is the first tips if f is any of the differentiable function at the point say x naught y naught then what is the meaning of that then its directional derivative exists at all these points oblique direction fine so look at that the directional derivative is existence at the point x naught and y naught for any point of the r2 because it is not if my derivative will be here then clearly it is not defined at 0 comma 0 but here this is a continuous it is a polynomial so f is differentiable at point x0 then the directional derivative also exists at all the points directional derivative existing everywhere is also the correct answer f has a directional derivative only along the path is a wrong answer f does not have a directional derivative is again a wrong answer so these are simple tips for you another method if if you don't remember this here then how you can find the directional derivative you can find the gradient of unit vector fine so this is x square i cap plus y square j cap what is the unit vector is nothing given to you so you can say u1 i cap u2 j cap so what is that directional derivative is u1 x square and u2 y square so for the different value of the u1 and u2 or you can say u1 square plus u2 square these are the unit vector so here so for each pair of the u1 and u2 you can find its directional derivative so it means it exists in all the points it is also the derivative it is clearly says from here okay look at the last question which is related to the midfix space so i think all of you know that midfix space property this is always be greater than zero this is zero if and only if x is equal to y it satisfies the triangular property and it is symmetric fine now look at the options d1 is something given to you that's 
this is my l2 this is my norm of the l1 are there uh, no, not uh, that's a usual L, uh, absolute sum which of the following is a midfield remember what is the simple tips for you if d is metric space then this over this is also metric space why i give you this remark because it look like say one of d upon something first one second is if d is my metric space then alpha times d is also metric space provided alpha is my positive and the real number fine secondly last one is if d1 and d2 are my metric space then the sum is also the metric space these are the simple remark so what is given to you d1 and d2 are the following matrix so it means d1 and d2 are my metric space then the sum of the matrix space is also the matrix space by the third remark so this is correct this is a wrong because you can see that if dx1 is greater than 0 this is also greater than 0 the difference may be less than 0 because if i say this value say 4 and this value says 5 then the difference will be minus 1 which is not greater than 0 so it is cancel out d1 is a matrix space e raised to power pi that is alpha is a positive real number so this is also the matrix space e raised to power minus pi is also the positive number this is also the matrix space sum of the two matrix space is also the matrix space now look at this one so we all know d1 is matrix so this is a matrix space so by using this d1 over 1 plus this is also the matrix space so this is also the correct answer so a c and d are my correct answers of this problem so this is the way you can see all those questions i give you several tips you can solve this in a coming examination in a very simple manner just remember this one one of the most important tips for the uniform continuity and this is the uniform convergence every year more than 10 questions will be asked from the real analysis in your examination i hope you can learn from my videos from the previous to the till date i hope you can like share and comment on my videos best of luck students happy learning